Hi everyone, Kevin here from Golf Guy Reviews and in this video today we're going to take a close up look at the brand new Painter X001F spikeless golf shoes. Now if you haven't heard of the brand Painter before that's because they are brand new to the golf world although they are not a totally new brand in themselves. So the gentleman's name is David Painter um, and he was a former professional cricket player um, who decided to make his own cricket shoes as well as some apparel as well. If you're watching this in the States and you've never heard of the sport cricket before, then it's kind of like baseball, except that there's a move in it called a googly, which is probably the most English thing you've ever heard. It can last five days and even then, it can still end in a draw. So it pretty much sums up the sport. But today in this video, we are gonna take a look at Painter's first attempt at a pair of golf shoes, because there's some really interesting things going on with these shoes that I wanna take a bit of a closer look at. Now we are still in lockdown here in the UK, so I haven't actually been able to wear these out on the golf course, so I will follow up with my separate form review once I've actually managed to use these out on the course. But for now, let's just take a closer look at these shoes. So first of all, let's take a look at the style and design of these shoes. And right off the bat, there's a cricket pun, get it? Right off the bat, ah. You can see that these are a very sporty and athletic looking shoe. You've got a couple of unique elements to this. Uh, so for example, you can see that you've kind of got this two-tone design on this version here. So you've got a gray, nope, sorry, you've got a white front part here, but you've got a gray bit on the other side. So you can see when you look at the toe box on the shoe, you actually get the two different colors as you look down and you've got that at the heel as well. Now that's because uh, Painter are using a duo density foam. So they've got firmer parts here uh, where they feel you need it and then softer parts on the opposite side as well. Now in terms of color options, then I've got the gray version here. Personally, I think I prefer the white version, which they also do. And then they have a darker colorway as well, but you've got a few different options to use and they currently retail here in the UK for 120 pounds. Now in terms of the upper, you can see here that you've got a kind of textured pattern to the majority of the toe box and the front quarter panel here. Um, and it is a kind of synthetic material. And then you can see here, you've got some additional material for the saddle, giving you a little Little bit more stability and that's got these kind of uh, kind of diagonal lines going across it there and then on the kind of ankle area here and towards the heel you've got a softer padded kind of mesh foam there um, it's definitely not knitted it's just kind of you know just a, a more kind of traditional softer material and then on the heel as well you've got this two-tone effect with a smoother kind of finish on the front of it there what you've got also as well in terms of the design of these shoes, uh, you've got some thin round laces on these shoes. So they're not flat, they are definitely rounded laces. And you can also see there that you've got these three red and one black eyelets on the shoe there, which give it a little bit of color as well. And then the tongue is quite wide actually on this shoe. So you might be able to see as well, if I hold it up to the camera there, that you've got this kind of mesh design. So you've got these holes in it. You've got a little bit of stretch to the tongue too, and it certainly is quite wide. Uh, so it gives you a nice comfortable feeling fit on the front of the foot, but I'm gonna cover that off a little bit later in this video. If we take a look at the outsole of the shoe, you can see that first of all, you've got this kind of see-through effect on this rubber outsole. So you've got all of these rubber lugs on the shoe, um, and actually you've got rubber lugs kind of here on the medial side, then you've got these arrows there more on the lateral, and if you look at the heel of the shoe, then that effect reverses, and that's designed to give you some traction when you're twisting and rotating out on the golf course. Now you've got here as well, you can see this kind of window at the kind of bottom of the shoe there, and that reveals this graphite plate at the bottom there. So there's, there's this plate of graphite right through this shoe, and it's designed to give you some additional stability as well as spring in the shoe. Now again, I can't really test that uh, when I'm locked down here in the UK, but once I'm out on the golf course, I will see actually how I uh, fare and get on with these shoes. Interestingly as well, you have got this kind of graphic at the back of the shoe, uh, kind of in the middle of the heel there, um, which kind of gives you this, the effect of this graphite plate going through the midsole. However, I've got to say, I think this is just a sticker. Yeah, 99.9% .9 sure that's a sticker because I can really move it with my finger um, and that's definitely not a hard plate kind of sticking out. So that's there more just for effects and just to kind of, you know, let you know that there's something in the shoe, but that's not the technology kind of 
protruding from the heel of the midsole there. In terms of the fit of these shoes, I would definitely recommend going up potentially half a size uh, because they do seem to fit quite snug. Uh, I went true to size with a UK 9 and they, my toes do come up right to the end of the shoe. Personally, I would have preferred to go up just that half a size to give me a little bit more room. While we're talking about fit and feel, the upper does feel nice and soft uh, across the foot. That being said, the upper is quite flexible. So I can definitely kind of, you know, move my toes around in it and you can see here actually you can see my foot kind of manipulating the upper of the shoe so that'll be actually quite interesting to test out when I'm out on the golf course because it's not doesn't necessarily feel like it's the most stable golf shoe that I've ever tried in terms of the feeling underfoot then wearing these around the house I can say that these do feel nice and soft uh, very squishy indeed certainly towards the heel of the shoe and I can probably feel a little bit of firmness uh, on the kind of inside of the shoe compared to the outside of the shoe uh, as they're designed to do. So I think these are gonna be absolutely fine for walking the course in. I think they're gonna be nice and soft and comfortable. But as I say, I do kind of wish I went up half a size. Taking a quick look at the outsole of the shoe, and as I already mentioned before, you've got these kind of various uh, lugs right across the bottom of the shoe there. And so I think they're gonna give you plenty of grip out on the golf course. What's gonna be kind of interesting as well is this little window bit here where you can see the graphite. I don't know if you can kind of see that on the camera. Did you hear my finger click as well? That was gross. There's definitely a bit of flexibility in there. And I do wonder if you trod on a sharp stick, you know, when you're in the rough, as I often am out on the golf course, I wonder whether that's gonna be able to be punctured or not. Hmm. Now, taking a closer look at the outsole as well, you can kind of see that they've got this bit of a split sole design going on here on the outsole. So you can see that the outsole isn't being used on these elements uh, and instead it just goes straight through to the foam. And again, that's designed to help the shoe kind of move with you as you walk in and during the golf swing. It will be really, really interesting to actually test these out on the course. Because overall, I think I've shown in this video that this is a pretty good first effort for a design of a golf shoe from Painter. They've really tried to you know, capture some unique elements, try and bring something different to the market and try and move some technology, technology? technology on to the next level with golf shoes. Painters certainly aren't the first company to put graphene or carbon fiber in the base of their golf shoes. Under Armour have been doing it for several shoes now um, and FootJoy have done it in their FootJoy carbon as well. So it's definitely a trend we're seeing in golf shoes now. And it'll just be interesting to see whether or not it's a trend that's actually gonna stay. But I am really, really interested to get these out on the golf course and let you know really what they feel like and what they're like to use. Because there are some areas in regards to the comfort, in regards to this tongue, um, and in, certainly in regards to the stability of these shoes, I am really, really interested to see how I get on. Let me know down in the comments, what do you think of the look and style of these shoes? And are you gonna think about picking up a pair? I really hope you enjoy this video today. So make sure you smash that like button if you do. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you are thinking about buying a brand new pair of golf shoes for this summer, why not check out this video that I've done here?